I was determined to, to go back to being Emily, the Emily I knew. And I think that that's the most naive thing. I want to know the story of what happens to somebody after the surgery and after they get better, whatever that is, because the story is it never ends. It's a continuous process and you have a new version of yourself and you have to see how you're going to live with that new version of yourself. And that keeps going forever. My first bleed happened when I was 38 on a tiny island in Maine. I learned it was in the uh, inner capsule of the left temporal lobe, which is a very difficult bit part of the brain to access and therefore surgery was going to be out of the question. With most cases I was told both by a hospital in Boston and then by London when I got back to London, chances of a rebleed were slim, chances of reabsorption were great and just sort of getting on with my life and living my life to the best of my abilities is what I should do. At that point I was left with no real feeling on my left hand side, it moved very slowly my handwriting, I'm left-handed, was essentially gone. Um, speech fine, no fits. Um, otherwise I felt absolutely fine except exhausted. I knew I had about a window of about four hours where my energy would be good to get through being a mother, being um, running a house, work stopped, um, and just sort of living. I had annual MRIs and then I began to feel a warmness in my knee Age 42, it began to creep up and felt exhausted again. And so at that point it had grown, the cavernoma had grown to 4.5 centimeters. And I felt that actually going down into surgery, I knew I had no choice. And actually whatever happened, if I didn't survive the surgery, it wouldn't be me that would have to deal with the repercussions. Again, the children were my focus. Woke up, felt great. Um, managed to say I'm in the National Hospital for Neurology and Neurosurgery, which try and say that on the best of days. Recovery, 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 recovery. Day five, woke up. I said, I just feel very straight. Stre and then I, five minutes of convulsions. It was terrifying. I felt like I'd had some control over getting better at that point. And then suddenly my brain, it felt like my brain was saying to me, eh, eh, eh don't you think this is going to be easy? So I was furious, terrified, exhausted, emotional, upset, frightened. The anger comes and goes. Um, and I think it's, it's pushed away as you have to push on some level, but it does come out. The anger that I've been like this since I was 38 years old. And I feel like this big chunk of wonderful midlife has um, been sort of played with, ruined, not ruined, but um, I miss the, f the freedom to take a step without thinking about taking a step. I miss the freedom of thinking at the end of the day, I've got to get to bed to have eight hours of sleep or else I might have a seizure. I miss getting onto a dance floor and just dancing. That's the thing, I'm, one of the things I miss the most is just throwing my body into the air and being free with it. I mean, I think it's made me a more a stronger, better, more interesting, more full person, sure. But I would love to have the physical side. And maybe I'd, I would like the emotional person that I am now, but the physical person, I would like the old Emily, the old physical Emily back. You begin to understand what you want and what you need in life much, much more. And you are therefore more determined to, do, to get that. Not hurting people and not creating d damage or catastrophe along that way, but you have a better, stronger sense of self. And that's an amazing thing to have.